Pure darkness surrounds you before a tunnel of vibrant white light emerges in front of your eyes. The heavenly light tunnel emits immense feelings of peace and love directly at you. Soft, benevolent entities appear before you. Some resemble fallen loved ones, others God himself. They beckon you towards the warm, piercing light with calming voices. You eagerly enter the light and await the secrets of life and reconnection with lost ones. Unbeknownst to you, your soul has just been sentenced to another 100 years of entrapment and your memory wiped. The tunnel of light, peace, love, and calming voices were merely tools to manipulate your soul to enter an eternal death trap. Damn, sounds like the same tactics my ex used. This episode is a must listen for anyone interested in strange stories of the unknown. We will outline an obscure theory of reality called prison planet theory and discuss the relationship between near death and out of body experiences, the astral plane, psychedelics, remote viewing, and ancient texts that describe bizarre reptilian entities. I'm your co-host Izzo, joined here by Magnum. And this is the Swerve Podcast. What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Got an incredible show in store for you all today. Happy you're here to join us. But if you're a first-time listener and you're wondering what you've stumbled across, we are the Swerve Podcast, and we do deep research on topics that swerve off the mainstream path and then talk about them in an uncensored way that's not boring. Here we like to prioritize our listener-requested topics preferably topics that we know little to nothing about, doing the extensive deep dive research so that you don't have to, all in line with our overall mission to understand everything in the universe one obscure topic at a time. Typically, we cover fun conspiracy stuff, fringe or cutting-edge science, forgotten or alternative history, strange myths, urban legends, consciousness, UFOs, true crime, the paranormal, or unexplained mysteries. But before we get into the basics of today's topic... Izzo, would you enlighten our listeners on our special tradition of the podcast? Yes, the tradition is that we like to drink while we record these episodes. So usually we'll take listener-recommended drinks, maybe make some cocktails, or just keep it basic, depending on the day. And then we like to share it with you. Today, on theme for the episode, I'm drinking something called an Attica Prison. It has a little bit of bourbon, a little bit of vermouth, a little bit of beer... And then some bitters as well, so disgusting. But (laughs) I guess that's prison for you. Interesting. Here we go. I am coming off a little bit of an illness. So I figured to get through this podcast and destroy whatever is uh, growing in the back of my throat, I'm going to do a shot of whiskey to (laughs) get this going. (laughs) Jesus, fuck. (laughs) That was terrible. It was really shitty whiskey, too, like that. One of those airplane bottles of Crown Royal. Crown's not bad. Oh, come on. What? Come on. It's good. I almost just threw up. That's how bad this was. (laughs) Anyways, so today we're going to be talking about the prison planet. This was recommended by Spurgalicious Asshat and Brittany Cook. We did have a vote that went on in December, and actually the vote that won was Rockefellers, and we did an episode on Rockefellers. But Rockefellers only won that vote by a single vote. So we just decided we might as well do Prison Planet because, you know, it was a close race. One vote off. Seemed like there was a lot of interest. So we decided to do this as our topic for this episode. All right. So let's get into the basics for today's topic. I would like to say right off the bat that after just doing a quick Google on this topic, this is a really, really interesting topic. We're going to go down some crazy fucking rabbit holes, but I got like major cult vibes from this topic in particular after, you know, many hours of research and Googling around and reading things, it kind of sounded like a faith-based religion. (laughs) With like a very pessimistic view on kind of all forms of religion and spirituality, like any other form. They're like, they're not about it. It's fake. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like space is fake, but it's like, it's like Christianity's fake, Islam's fake, all this is fake. But like our reptilian theory is real kind of thing. 
Yeah. I don't know if you got that vibe. This was kind of the vibe I was getting from this. I don't know. From the first search, I got mostly the, like, aliens imprisoning humans on Earth. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Okay, so you didn't, maybe you didn't get the, the, the vibe, but this is kind of what I got. And maybe this will make more sense when we go through the topic. But this prison planet theory, it's kind of uh, the merging of a lot of common conspiracy tropes with kind of the altered states of consciousness crowd. So, like, you know, it's all consciousness man kind of thing and, like, yeah. psychedelics. Uh, Gnosticism is huge, a huge influence for this, and we'll get into that later. And that that kind of that's kind of where the... I guess the pessimistic view of all religions comes from is like the, the Gnostics, they have this general distrust in spirituality. And we'll, we'll explain that when we get out of the basics and it also ties in reincarnation. So it's very weird. It's kind of like ancient religious philosophy, Gnosticism with reincarnation, which is kind of like a modern religion in some places, a lot of conspiracy tropes. And then you have, on top layered on top of all of that like the 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 consciousness crowd so it's a very unique topic and i think this is why it's so popular is because it touches so many different fields per se yeah and it is a very popular topic. i am like, shocked at how popular this topic is once a day somebody will post about it low and away on reddit yeah yes no more than once a day oh my god dude there's at an least, entire subreddit at least once a day yeah there's like which we'll get into. There's actually really great information on that subreddit, which I'll talk about next year. But I want to. I would like to say to the listeners, this is going to be a great one. This is this is a fun episode. It's extremely entertaining. The the ideas here, but I would keep your salt meter on high. That's all I'm saying. This isn't a science based episode. Do your own research. Do your own research. Now, most of the information I've actually I found, there's a really great post on the r slash escaping prison planet it's a great write-up by a guy i want to give him a shout out uh esoteric ninja he kind of consolidated the entire field into a massive massive post and as far as research went that post was i don't know like i would say an ultimate source for if you want to learn prison planet it was really really good but Let's talk for a second here about our slash escaping prison planet. This might give you an idea in the basics of what we're going to be discussing. This is from the about section of our slash escaping prison planet. Quote, this community explores the possibility that human souls are trapped in Earth's <laughs> reincarnation cycle. Since there is plenty of evidence indicating that this could be the truth. Evidence suggests that after physical death, human souls are time and time again wiped of their memories and sent back to Earth to live more physical lives for reasons that do not benefit us, but those who are interested in farming us. Meaning that there is a possibility that Earth could be a soul farm or a prison planet. End quote. So the nutshell of the prison planet theory, it alleges that Earth is a massive farm used by various parasitic entities who are using us as energetic food. Kind of sounds like Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any chance, any chance I get to shit on Canada, I'll take it. Yeah. We're Canadian, by the way, for first time listeners, and uh, I'm traumatized. I'm traumatized. Get me out of here. <laughs> prison country. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, this is this is just the prison planet is just a metaphor for Canada. <laughs> it's not even a, it's just like a deep metaphor that's used to like covertly communicate in like allegories and like story form. <laughs> We're dying over here, man. <laughs> we can't leave, our accounts are frozen. <laughs> <laughs> So we have a lot to dive into, and I could promise if you listen to the end of this episode, your mind's going to be blown. And uh, <laughs> what was that? what did you just? I do? just made a sound effect. <laughs> I'm a soundboard. <laughs> we can't afford a soundboard. Yeah, you just have me doing all this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about this epic Reddit post because a lot of the information is going to be sourced from here because it was such a great resource. So this uh, this post. It has 5,500 upvotes. Extremely popular posts. That's, uh, those are like seminal posts in Reddit. 
you don't really see those every day. This one's got a lot. Yeah. I would like to, this is, this is this esoteric ninja guy. This is kind of how he begins the post. He says the following quote, I've researched the afterlife for nearly 10 years. I'm convinced that reptilian beings are real and that the tunnel of light that people see when they die is a trap. End quote. Now, based on the research that I did, Basically, all the evidence for this prison planet theory is derived from references involving near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, astral projection experiences, past life regression and hypnosis data, remote viewing data, uh, Gnosticism, which we'll explain more later when we get into that, and then various ancient texts. And there, there are other sources. This is this, but this was kind of the main thing. So, one thing I would like to point out: the entire theory, the citations that are used to as a foundation for the theory, they're all kind of based on self reports, which doesn't necessarily mean that this isn't, you know, it doesn't necessarily negate things. But I would just like to make listeners aware: keep that in your mind when you're interpreting the conclusions of this theory. Because it really is based on a lot of self-reports. I would like to give props, though, to the OP for that made this post. Because he does mention that you can't really conclude anything with certainty. And he kind of presented this more as a hypothesis. Yeah. And I like that. So this is more, when we're talking about this prison planet theory, I would kind of like to treat it as a hypothesis rather than this set in stone thing. And most of the data, as I'm saying, is coming from these like very obscure experiences. Like near-death experiences are rare. Same with the out-of-body thing, the astral projection stuff. We've kind of covered a lot of this stuff before. You know, like same with like past life regression. Like that data is pretty flimsy. And same with, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like th this is where everything's coming from. So with that in mind, let's get into what this theory is actually all about so let's start with talking about reincarnation and the white tunnel of light this is a very foundational belief of this entire theory basically common reports after a near-death experience include a tunnel of white light we're all kind of we've kind of heard this story before and in fact even on our uh near-death experience episode we do mention i think we do mention that yeah there's a meeting of dead relatives or like being spoken to by what you perceive as God or whatever. There's like these weird experiences. But the one to keep in your mind is the tunnel of white light. This is kind of like the common thing throughout the prison planet theory. So the prison planet theory claims that the tunnel of light, which appears, is actually just a trap. It's designed to wipe the whole memory of the latest incarnation and to recycle the individual's soul into another body. So this tunnel of light, basically, it's functioning to keep an individual's soul kind of in an infinite loop on Earth, if that makes sense. And that's like a core foundation of, of this theory. It's like the whole thing of like, oh, when you enter the white light, it's like you're being reborn again as like a brand new baby. And that's the loop. That's the infinite loop that we're talking about here. There's also a memory wipe that occurs with it. And this causes everyone to have amnesia of their past experiences. There are, There is a small group of individuals that do recall their past lives. And this is kind of also used as evidence for the prison planet theory. And we'll talk about that later. Like, you know, like the past life regression kind of stuff. Yeah. Like people recalling. We did a whole episode on that. We'll talk more about it. But so the idea is most people aren't aware of this because of the memory wipe. It just feels like a new life. But there are certain individuals who, for whatever reason, their memory wasn't completely wiped and they do recall a past life. And that's used as evidence for the prison planet theory. The prison planet theory also claims that reincarnation is a real phenomenon. And that's that's like a core belief. This theory doesn't work if that's not true. I want to talk next about the astral realm, the reptilians and their devious agenda we we'll do a sound for that as well yeah what do reptiles sound like <laughs> we need more patreon so we can get a soundboard <laughs> yeah we <laughs> send us one <laughs> we don't have them in canada 
So the prison planet theory sites that you know, all that I'm thinking about is like reptiles, like I don't know, like you, I'm not even going there. Let's fuck it. Let's move on. Let's push forward. Let's push forward. Let's be professional. We're professionals here on this word podcast. So it cites that reptilians are referenced in multiple ancient cultures across the globe. The reference cited there's a bunch of these main sources, and they they kind of all suggest maybe the existence of reptile beings, like in ancient times or some shit. So Jainism and Hindu, they have the Naga, whom they describe as half-human, half-serpent deities. That's N-A-G-A. Aztecs worship the, the Quetzalcoatl, whom they described as the serpent-like god. The Hopi Indians in North America, they have the Shetty, translates to Snake Brothers. And then African shamans, there's claims of the Chitari whom they say control the earth. And then Chinese, Korean, and Japanese legends, they reference a race of reptilians called the Kappa, which is interesting because in Mario, those turtles are called Kappas, mm. and they're also reptiles. That's the connection. Connecting the dots. <laughs> the, the Gnostics, which we've referenced a few times already, they do reference parasitic entities called Archons, I believe is how they pronounce it who use humans as an energetic food source, but they also prevent our souls from leaving the material realm upon the death of our physical bodies. These are kind of, these ancient references are kind of used as a foundation for the claim that reptile beings exist. That ties into this prison planet theory. Now, if we're going to talk about the reptilians, there's a few claims that are made about these reptiles. Not only do they move their tongues at rapid rates, as demonstrated by Izzo, <laughs> but they are both physical and astral beings. They have been manipulating man for thousands of years, and they're responsible for setting up this soul trap using advanced technology. It's alleged that they operate an energy grid around Earth that sends tunnels of light to recently deceased people to lure their souls. The trap souls that get lured into the light, right? Because you're like, oh, I'm going to go into the light because, like, fuck it, I'm going to heaven or whatever the fuck. What actually happens is your memory gets erased and then you're sent to another body on Earth. The other component of this is that the reptiles, uh, the alleged reptiles, they feed on negative lower vibrational energy. So emotions like fear, pain, grief, rage, anxiety, and lust. That's the idea. These reptiles are eating your low vibrational energy and they erase your memory because they trick you with white light tunnels. Energy vampires. Yeah. Let's talk about the astral plane. The prison planet theory claims that higher, dimensional, that higher dimensions outside of our three-dimensional reality exist, such as the astral plane. We've talked about the astral plane before. I actually think we did a Patreon episode on that. We did a lot of Patreon episodes on shit that we're mentioning today. Yeah. The astral plane, this is where the parasitic repti reptilians are claimed to exist. So it's this, it's not the physical plane, it's the astral plane. Which it, it's, you know, it's confusing a little bit because the, it wasn't the, like, the energy grid is around the earth. And isn't that like three-dimensional? You know what, I don't know. Maybe, I, I don't know. We'll save it for final thoughts. But when physical bodies die or when an individual has an out-of-body experience, the prison planet theory claims that the individual soul enters the astral plane. Now, this is where the trick occurs. In the astral plane, the parasitic reptilians take on the form of God, dead relatives, or, you know, like if you're Christian, Jesus, if you're a Muslim, Muhammad, etc. Like whatever, whatever it is, they'll take on that form. And it kind of makes the soul feel good and like peaceful and like, oh, I should interact with this entity. But it basically is just used to trick souls into entering the tunnel of light, which is this reptilian technology. So it's a manipulation tactic to gain trust. This is fun. This, so this is from the Reddit post that we were mentioning earlier. This is the OP quotes the Holy Bible to support his claim here. And he says the following. Quote, and no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. That's 2 Corinthians 11, 14, end quote. There's some references to like tunnels of light maybe being a trick, and that's also used as evidence 
that the white tunnel of light and the reptilian prison planet theory is a thing. Say no to white light. Don't go towards the tunnel. Yeah, towards say no light. Say no to white light. Why can't we have red light, blue light, green light? Black light. Black light matters. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, like, that doesn't exist, but it does. Black lights are a thing. I forgot for, like, a second. Yeah, like, you gotta be careful with those, though. Like, something, you know, like, put a black light. That was my worst fear, going out. <laughs> clubbing wearing a shirt that i already wore once or did that guy just jack off <laughs> yeah. why is he covered <laughs> what's that on your shirt uh what's that all over jizz? your face <laughs> <laughs> damn that is uh that's interesting to note that they like manipulate posing as god or something so it's really they struck a deal with the churches and religion and big hollywood we've been taught to always go towards <laughs> the light they struck a deal with Big Hollywood. Yeah. I like that. Harvey Weinstein's in this. Yeah, I like that. Tricking people. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Big Hollywood. Big Hollywood. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the afterlife tricks and the scams that are occurring. Let's go more depth into this. If an individual does not enter the tunnel of light, the entities will try convince and kind of try persuade the individual again trying different forms. They might be an angel. They might be Jesus, God, a saint, maybe some kind of a guide, maybe an ascended master if you're more secular or some kind of like guardian angel, like whatever the fuck they need to do, they'll do. They'll just become whatever, you know, whatever they need to kind of thing. If the individuals still refuse to enter the tunnel of light, the entities will try even further to persuade and convince them. They will be like, oh, you got to go back to Earth to like pay a karmic debt or like you didn't learn enough. Like, go back and learn some shit. You dumb fuck. <laughs> they'll send you <laughs> back to Earth or they'll be like, oh, you know what? You're actually really special. You're very smart. You're a special boy. We got a special mission for the special boy. And they'll send you back to Earth to fulfill your special mission. All of this apparently is bullshit. It's just elaborate, an elaborate ruse to get you to enter their tunnel of white light. It's claimed that the prominence of religious indoctrination and big Hollywood, as we've brought up on the Swerve podcast, you heard it here first, big Hollywood, this permeates the culture. So it makes it really easy for these reptilian entities to convince and trap your soul because it's very believable, right? How many times have you seen this common trope in various cultural pieces of media i mean everywhere it's everywhere yeah it's absolutely everywhere i might believe this theory now like that's a cons <laughs> fuck everyone's yeah. in on it i do like how like the past life like people uh past life regressions how they didn't have their memory erased or like they still have bits and pieces of it so they're like trying to tell us then they grow up and they forget about it yeah from from the episode that we did, it's just like kids saying, oh, I used to be this. I used to do this for work. These were my like what children kid? in their past life. There's, life there. there's that one kid that it was like a captain of a ship. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. It just sounds ridiculous. Like this kid's the captain of the ship. But like he he literally was like a 40 year old captain of the ship. Yeah. And he remembers that. And then he like turns four and he forgets about it. No, that's that's a very interesting episode. Um, I don't know why I don't have it in the notes, but we should shout out that episode. Past Life Regression was a crazy killer episode. Do you remember Ian Stevenson, the guy who does like all the reincarnation research? Yeah. And there's I forget where the there's an institute in the United States. I forget where it was, but there's a whole research division at like a real university that studies near death experiences. So there there's some merit to like some things we're talking about. Um, outside of this prison planet theory. But I would like to talk about the free will and the soul next. The prison planet theory claims that souls have free will, and therefore the reptilian entities cannot force reincarnation. So they have to use these tricks to deceive and use these to kind of make people believe that what is happening is real and that it is their best interest to listen to these entities. But the real purpose of the continuous reincarnation is soul enslavement disguised as spiritual evolution. 
That's the idea. So there's this free will component as well. But memory wipe and the cosmic school, let's talk a little bit about this. The prison planet theory claims that because memories are wiped after each lifetime, most people aren't, they're just under an illusion. They're currently living their first life. You know, things are good. You were born. You went to school. You got bullied, thrown in a locker. Molested. <laughs> you know, anyways, you know, people just think this is their life. Yeah. Their wife doesn't really love them. They're depressed. Kids hate them. Kids hate them. You know, they're driven to the bottle. You think I want to be doing this? Exactly. And at the end, you know, like it's, this is what they think is going on. And they think this is their first life, but here we go. This is like their thousands, their, their thousand, (laughs) thousand. All right. We just cut the pod there. We're done. Like (laughs) pack it up. Fuck. Probably. You know, sometimes these topics are difficult. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know how to speak, apparently. Let's just get, let's just move through it. So people have had many lives and they think it's their first is the main point. That's all I was trying to say here. Earth is a prison planet camouflaged as a cosmic school. The idea of a cosmic school is used to trick souls into wanting to come and stay on earth to learn so this is where the souls are coming from earth is a cosmic school and like people want to go there and learn because it's like prestigious people want to ride the magic school bus well fuck yeah i'd ride the magic school bus that's fucking sick miss frizzle the magic yeah well fuck yeah miss frizzle man like come on what are you talking about she's that's that's what happens when you're about to die miss frizzle is like Come on board. <laughs> Magic scuba. <laughs> I don't know. You know, usually, like, yeah, I don't have a thing for redheads, but fuck. Uh, Miss Frizzle? <laughs> Just me? My bad. All right. Magic School Bus would be sick, though, because everywhere you go, like, you know, like Mars, like, waves at you. It's like, oh, hey. <laughs> like, fucking, you know, like the ocean like smiles at you you know like everything's like personified and it's like sick yeah when i wave at mars nothing happens <laughs> that's what elon is saying when i wave at mars nothing happens <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's like we gotta go there and we'll wave back okay he, souls are tricked to coming to the cosmic school paying a huge tuition like fuck inflation jesus the whole thing is designed to drain individuals' energy, wipe memories over and over again, and keep the souls trapped. Kind of sounds like Harvard, right? Like any of those, or you know, like yeah, I mean, a little bit. It's a cosmic school, like all these Ivy League schools. Like, hey, come here, we'll fucking uh, we'll wipe your memories, drain your energy, and uh, keep your souls trapped here forever in perpetuity. <laughs> okay, let's talk about emotional manipulation traps and near death experiences. Okay, so we're talking about my ex? Yeah, we already made that joke. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) Near-death experiences sometimes report being accompanied by a loving angel who showed them their life review. This is, you've heard this. We've, big Hollywood, right? The prison planet theory claims that the reason the entities show life reviews is so that individuals can relive certain moments in which certain mistakes were made, and by reliving those moments... The feelings of guilt, shame, and remorse are that were generated, which will make the individual want to compensate for them, right? So they're kind of just guilt tripping. They're kind of double dipping there because they feed off the negative, oh. lower vibrational energy. They are double dipping. And then they like trick you to go in towards the light. That's a cultural faux pas. You can't be double dipping. Nah, nah, um. You double dip? I don't fucking double dip. I double dip. dip. You double dip? <laughs> Of course I double dip. You fucking savage. Double deep. <laughs> what, why'd you say it like that? <laughs> well, maybe I double dip too. I don't know. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Before- 
before we continue the episode, if you're enjoying our podcast while being trapped in the prison planet, the people you hang out with probably will too. Do us a solid and please pass on this episode to your social media friends on Instagram X or other platforms. We would definitely appreciate your support. I'd also like to take this time to shout out some of our valued listeners. Shout out to SF underscore baby doll and hang them high for liking over 60 of our posts on social media. Also huge shout outs to the newest initiates on Patreon. Shout out to D Danielson and Daniel Brown for joining our ride the wave tier. Huge super shout outs to George, Michael Gould and Brock Huseman for joining our slap that ass tier. And lastly, special shout out to Max Johnson. So glad you and your dad enjoy listening to our show together. This won't make sense to anyone, but Baseman Yad. To everyone else, please feel free to submit your topic or drink recommendations at theswervepodcast.com. May good Carmen vibes with all of you. Back to the show. Now, one of the core tenets of the prison planet theory is that like new age shit is completely destroying humanity, at least based on my interpretation of the data. The prison planet theory claims that new age believers who promote calling upon your spirit guides, guardian angels, ascended masters, and religious figures for help, they're actually doing huge damage to humanity and they're not even aware of it. These guys are just trying to trap your souls. So this whole new age thing, you know, follow your fucking spirit animal, your, I don't know, your favorite guru who's charging you to take fucking hot yoga classes. Just so you can double deep in you. Yeah, (laughs) double (laughs) dip. I don't know. This is my point. This is what I'm saying. It's uh, Prison Planet Theory agrees new age stuff is destroying humanity. And maybe that's, we can all agree on that at the end of the day. Now, here's the other thing. Religion is trapping your soul. The prison planet theory claims that religion has programmed people to believe that at the moment of death, a spiritual judgment type scenario will take place, kind of like the the biblical judgment. And this kind of creates a situation where the individual, they kind of expect to give their authority away after they die to God, to angels, to guides. So the individuals, they accept whatever the entity asks because the scenario resembles religion teachings on earth. Big religion, right? Big Jesus Christ. Big JC. Big Christ. (laughs) Big JC Penny. Yeah. (laughs) Big Hollywood, big religion. Here we go. It's all reptilians. Even atheists, when presented with God or Big Jesus they likely will have second thoughts, right? They've been exposed to religious ideas, and now all of a sudden they see big Jesus? And then it's even like a more a bigger incentive to go towards the light and like become a follower because you're like, oh, I spent my life not believing, but now I have the chance to like do it again and become a believer. Exactly. So like the new atheists like Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, watch out. Watch out. It's not big Jesus. It's a fucking reptile. <laughs> okay, so another core tenet of the prison planet theory is the claim that everybody is kind of like source material from whatever reality is. So like the we're like real powerful infinite creator god, that kind of idea. It's like kind of within everybody. It, it in fact it is everybody. So there's this idea again that we are all like source energy we are the saviors we have been waiting for and we don't need to give our power away to anybody. Very Nietzschean, like the Uberman, you know, the death of God, and we will become our own gods. This is the idea. A common question you might be thinking is like, well, why if why is source energy or the creator of the universe allowing this to happen? Like, why, why is that the case? So the prison planet theory claims that each being in the universe, whether man- malevolent or benevolent, has free will. I'll give an analogy. Humans are to animal consumption as reptilian entities are to human energy consumption. Okay, that's good. So we don't deem ourselves evil. We just need to survive. So, you know, like, fuck, I'll crush some flamethrower DQ. It's fine. I need to consume. This also means that there's some reptilians that are, like, vegan, so they don't consume human. Maybe, yeah, maybe they're, yeah, that's a good point. There's some uh, vegan reptiles out there, maybe. There's some, like, reptilians holding signs, <laughs> like PETA, stop consuming you. What are they consuming instead, then? 
some bullshit plant. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Plant <laughs> souls. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. They're just eating the vegans. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So anyway, so like the reptilian, it's not like that they're evil. They're just kind of consuming, and this is how they know how to consume. I have a lot of claimed evidence for the prison planet theory, and, and I want to try to go through it rather succinctly. Evidence number one, past life regression. We talked about this. This is actually episode 59, listeners, if you want to go back and listen to some old school past life regression episode. Very interesting episode. For those who aren't aware, past life regression, this is a therapeutic practice that uses hypnotic methods to allegedly recover memories of the past live or incarnations of subjects. So it's like a hypnotic method. You can recall memories from a past life. It's highly associated with the concept of reincarnation. Now, proponents of the prison planet theory claim that past life regression therapy sessions are a piece of evidence for this whole idea. Specifically, in the article that we're citing, the OP cites five specific sessions among 400 of an Italian past life regression guy named Calogero Grifassi. In session one, there's an entity that masquerades as Jesus to entrap souls upon death. This is an investigative session on the reincarnation cycle to find out what happens to a soul in between lives, and it shows how a soul is being deceived by astral entities to reincarnate back on Earth. That's allegedly what came out of one session of a past life regression session with this random guy named Calogero Grifasi. In another session, session two, it was shown that reptilian entities interfere with us and after our lives on Earth. In session three, the session revealed stuff about kind of alien technology and how entities use religions in their favor against us. So again, this is big, big religion, big Jesus Christ. Session four, another session with a different client reveals that Earth acts as a soul reincarnation trap for anyone who incarnates here. And then finally, session five, the unmasking of a client's spirit guide, which turned out to be nothing more than an energetic parasite pretending to be the client's spirit guide. So they cite these past life regression sessions as evidence of the prison planet theory. There's a claim that like thousands of these sessions have been done with different people from all over the world. And there's common references to entities such as that, that play God, big Jesus, angels, and they trick people into reincarnating back on earth and have their memories erased. This is coming out of the past life regression stuff. Now, before we move out of that idea, I did, there is a cool case report that's mentioned. In addition to those, there's this guy named Truman Cash who is an alleged alien abductee and an afterlife past life regression researcher. He claims from a past life regression memory that he discovered that every time he died, the tunnel of light led him to an implant station where advanced alien technology was used on him in order to erase his memories. Then he was sent back to earth and put into a newborn's body, thus becoming trapped in earth's reincarnation cycle for thousands of years. So this is, this is kind of like a technological side to it. Evidence two, this is a very interesting one. So this is kind of perspectives of Gnosticism and Buddhism. So we mentioned Gnosticism a lot, but let's talk about it finally. Gnostics emphasized personal spiritual knowledge. So gnosis is uh, the word for knowledge in Greek. They emphasize knowledge above the orthodox teachings, traditions, and authorities of religious institutions. So Gnostic cosmogony generally presents a distinction between a supreme and hidden god with a malevolent lesser divinity, sometimes associated with the biblical deity, Yahweh, who is responsible for creating the material universe. So what's that? Mawe? What is that? Oh, you said Yahweh, and I said Mawe. <laughs> Mawe? Your way, my way. Oh, got it, got That's it. Stupid. <laughs> I just needed to make noise. Puns. <laughs> Puns are the the worst form of humor. I know, you hate them. <laughs> I absolutely despise puns. But here we are, reincarnated. My soul's trapped, forced to bear 
witness to puns. Then there's also Huawei. Huawei, yeah. Huawei, I hear they are uh, Chinese spies. <laughs> I don't know what the Gnostics were. They talking about cell phones? Were they talking about you? I'm confused. Anyways, it sounds like to me, the Gnostics, they kind of have like a supreme god that you can't really see, but there's like evil other divine forces that like um, make you believe that they are the god, but they are not actually the god. That's the idea. So the Gnostics are very skeptical, kind of like this podcast. We're very skeptical. Yeah. So the Gnostics, they considered material existence flawed or evil. And they held the principal element of salvation to be direct knowledge of the hidden divinity attained via mystical or esoteric insight. So many Gnostic texts deal not in concepts of sin and repentance, but with illusion and enlightenment, right? So this illusion that this is the God, but there's actually a a God, a hidden God behind that God posing as God is the idea. So in Gnostic texts, they talk about the parasitic entities and they refer to them as the archons. They report them as not only using humans as energetic food sources, but also preventing our souls from leaving the material realm upon death of our physical bodies. It's very interesting, right? Like prison planet theory is basically Gnosticism. Yeah. It's just like a a permutation of it with like technological and like reptilian reference points. So the Gnostic texts describe at length the manipulation of humankind by what they call non-human archons or rulers. So these would kind of be the fake gods, I would suppose. Yeah. So according to the Gnostics, after the creation of the physical world, the Demiurge gave birth to the archons who could help him administer the physical world. He then created the first physical bodies on Earth, one male and one female, which are commonly known as Adam and Eve. The Demiurge then imprisoned the first divine sparks, so the souls like you or I, technically, and this theory within their bodies yeah it's this is when i when i came across this knowledge i was like oh like this is just like a modern gnosticism yeah which is kind of interesting now buddhism also kind of turns into this right it teaches that reincarnation is an endless cycle of suffering the wheel of samsara that can only be broken by achieving enlightenment and here i guess enlightenment would be the realization that this is fake this is a reptile this isn't big jesus so it's kind of interesting. So there's like some ties to those perspectives, but those are those perspectives are used as evidence. Like they actually, people who believe this theory, that's a form of evidence. They're like, well, they were on to something, I guess is the idea. Number three, remote viewing. We talked about this episode 16. Shout out to super old fucking episode. Now, for those who aren't aware, remote viewing is the practice of seeking impressions about a distant or unseen target purportedly using extrasensory perception. So ESP kind of as like as a sensing with the mind. This is alleged to allow practitioners to gather information from remote geographical targets without the constraints of space and time being imposed. Now this sounds crazy, but when we did the topic on this, there's actually a lot of declassified documents that show that remote viewing was literally studied by the CIA throughout the 1970s. Proponents of the prison planet theory, they claim that expert remote be- viewers have encountered these reptilian entities and can confirm their existence. So specifically, when I was researching into this, the Farsight Institute, they have allegedly used remote viewing to perceive aspects of the prison planet theory. So I'll give two specific examples. So the Farsight Institute, they had a, they called it the Death Traps Project. Which to me already is like, you've kind of already biased the project because you've titled it the Death Traps Project, kind of looking for what you already want to see kind of thing. Yeah. So they use remote viewing, allegedly use remote viewing to investigate what happens when a body dies. Three remote viewing practitioners perceive the exact same scenario without communicating with each other, allegedly. In this scenario, they saw that the soul was confused, disorientated, and ended up entering a tunnel of light which violently shocked the soul. Immediately after that, the soul no longer had memory of who it was and where it came from. So in that project, they had like three remote viewers see this, is the claim. And that's used as evidence for the prison planet theory. 
Now, the Farsight Institute, they also had another project called the Escape Project. And here, remote viewers allegedly were able to psychically perceive the grids that surrounded the Earth. And this was being used to zap souls who attempted to go through it. So you couldn't get through it because it would zap you. Mm, okay. Now, another thing not related to the Farsight Institute is called the Moksha Project. This was another remote viewing project titled Moksha by a dude named Brett Stewart. And he's claimed to have uncovered similar findings as the Farsight Institute regarding the afterlife. Again, using remote viewing techniques. Those are also used as pieces of evidence for the prison planet theory proponents. Number four, Robert Monroe. This is sick. Robert Monroe, we covered this, Project Gateway, a CIA project that was declassified. Actually, this is uh, surprisingly, this is episode 35, so old school. But to date, it is still our most popular episode. Damn. Which is crazy, because I would have never expected that. So I would recommend checking it out, listeners, if you have not, episode 35, Project Gateway. Now, Robert Monroe, he was the father of -of out-of-body experiences and astral projection. He personally had out-of-body experiences for 30 years. He didn't really know what the hell was happening to him. He felt crazy. He kind of did a lot of research into this and founded his own institute called the Monroe Institute, which basically initiated the study of -of out-of-body experiences. He alleged that reality is used to create and harvest Loosh energy, also known as emotional energy. Now, he claims that the universe has been enslaved for the production of loosh energy by interdimensional beings who see themselves as rulers of humanity and were kind of enslaved like cattle, emotional cattle. That's why we're all sad. That's why we're all sad, and that's why everyone listens to Deftones now. Deftones? <laughs> Deftones came back, bro. What's Deft? Deftones is a, it's a band from the 90s. They were popular through the 90s, and they weren't popular, but they're popular again because everybody's sad, and that's the type of music you listen to when you're sad, but enough. So that's what Robert Monroe had to say. That's kind of the out-of-body experience side of things. I don't know. This is just a claim people use, like astral plane, reptilians, they're there. Here we are. Psychedelic experiences. Which we've also done, like, topics on. We've done a lot of t- like DMT, random, like yeah. DMT, yeah, DMT for sure. I began therapy is technically, I began therapy is like one of the, I think one of my favorite that we looked into because it's so radical. But anyways, some psychedelic practitioners report experiences similar to the prison planet theory's thesis when they are on psychedelics. So like their trip indicates that there's a place, and this is either a prison planet or a soul farm, and we're being farmed energetically. So people. Proponents of the prison planet theory, they claim that some psychedelic experiences are evidence for their theory. Number six, remember David Icke? Patreon exclusive number 27, reptilian elites. Here we go. David Icke believes that the universe is made up of vibrational energy and consists of an infinite number of dimensions. He basically researches a lot on this subject and he writes a lot of books, like a lot of fucking books. It's crazy. He claims that there's an interdimensional race of reptilians that have hijacked the earth and they're continuously manipulating global events in order to keep humans controlled and in constant fear. Big Hollywood, big religion, big culture, big politics, big, big. <laughs> big bitch. <laughs> Wes Penray. This is evidence number seven. Penray is a researcher of metaphysics the alien presence on Earth, and the matrix that we find ourselves in, human origins, and a lot more. He basically explained what the tunnel of light was and how the death trap works, or sorry, what the death trap is and how to avoid it kind of thing. He's used as another piece of evidence. I, You know, I I was going to save this for final thoughts, but I just find it hilarious that the pieces of evidence, they're like, well, David Icke, well, Wes Penray. (laughs) And it's like, great, thanks. This is used as evidence. But I'm, I'm just reporting the topic. This is what I found. Evidence number eight, Simon Parks. Simon Parks was an elected politician in the UK who served a full term of office. Parks claims to have had alien experiences in his life, including experiences with the reptilians. Simon talks about the tunnel of light being a soul trap and that near-death experiencers are genuine. He also mentions that the system doesn't want to publicize the reptilians, 
because they signed an agreement with them to not be publicized and that the reptilian race has been manipulating humanity for thousands of years. So David Icke, Simon, Wes, they're all in the same boat. And there's three others that are used as evidence. I'm just going to go through them quick. The first is Val Valerian. Val Valerian is a former CIA agent who started writing about the soul reincarnation trap about Earth being a prison planet in the 90s. And in one of his books, Val Valerian writes the following, quote, It is they who await in the light when a human being dies. The human being is then recycled into another body. They protect the person's image in the white light tunnel, and the image waves you in deeper if you choose to follow. You can be trapped and sent to another incarnation of their choice. These entities view Earth as a big farm. End quote. Big farm. Farm, big agriculture, big pharma, big religion, big Hollywood, big Jesus. <laughs> yeah, little big planet. Connecting the dots. Yeah. Big Mac. <laughs> you eat one of those, you're sad as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Harvesting the emotional energy. People. Listen, the Swerve Podcast, we have you covered. Alex Collier claims to be in contact with an ET race from the constellation of Andromeda. According to him, the Draconians, also known as the Reptilians, are the force behind (laughs) the repression of human populations everywhere in the galaxy. And finally, Wayne Bush. Big Bush! (laughs) (laughs) Everyone loves a big bush. (laughs) Oh, God. Wayne Bush is an afterlife researcher that also references a white tunnel of light that is luring souls into a mind white reincarnation trap. So just because he exists, I guess that's evidence of the fucking theory, I guess. I mean, we could be evidence number 12. Swerve podcast. They also have been in contact with reptilians. Some some other podcast out there that could be like, and evidence number twelve, the Swerve Podcast. <laughs> the Swerve Podcast. They we have twelve <laughs> pieces of evidence now. <laughs> let's digress and let's talk about how to escape this trap. Proponents of the prison planet theory they claim that individuals are infinite, powerful creator beings who will never cease to exist, but they have been captured and imprisoned. Essentially, basically, everyone is a god because their souls are connected to the source. We're all just like pieces of the source. So every soul could express itself in infinite ways without any limitation if they recognize the truth. The way I like thinking about that, have you ever had a lucid dream? No. Oh, dude, really? I've tried to. Have you ever had a dream where you were at least aware for like anything and like able to control anything or you're just, you can't control anything ever. No, I've, I've had those dreams, but I also like rarely ever dream. Oh, you're one of those. Yeah. It's like a couple times a year. (laughs) Yeah. Interesting. Fuck. I just, I mind wipe every day. Yeah. You're getting mind wiped. I enter the white tunnel every day. I enter the white tunnel every day. Yeah. Anyways, I like to think, if you're from the source, you know how you're in a lucid dream, you can do anything you want. You can like create a building, you can part the seas, turn water to wine, yeah. all those types of things. You could just do it. The idea is, well, like we actually can just do that in the astral plane, but we don't know it. You forgot to mention your skin is a cracker. What? <laughs> turn your skin to a cracker? You turn... Wa- like, like Ritz? Water into wine. You look down, your hands are cracker. <laughs> what the fuck? So, you know, it's like the bread of Christ. It's like. Oh, yeah, it's fucking bread. Yeah, yeah okay. Bread or crackers, yeah. I guess. Yeah. No, it's not bread or crackers. Look, it's bread. You look down, you're a cracker. <laughs> <laughs> you look down, you're, just... <laughs> you're just made out of. You're just made out of bread. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Here's a big loaf of bread. Shit. Add big bread to the list. Yeah, that's why you don't dream, man, because it's fucking stupid. (laughs) Oh, me personally? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why it only happens once or twice a year. 
fuck, I'm a piece of bread. <laughs> fuck, I'm a, I have a gluten intolerance and I'm a piece yeah. of bread. <laughs> that's a nightmare. <laughs> Anyways, fuck, that's awesome. The next line, I'm laughing at it. I haven't even read it. Okay, let's see here. If you're, if you're inside someone else's creation... <laughs> I know why you're laughing. Let me just get. <laughs> so remember, everybody's a god and you have infinite power in the astral plane. But if you were in someone else's creation, you can get stuck in it and you have to play by their rules. <laughs> yeah, brother, I'm stuck. <laughs> so how do you escape this? Here's a step by step method. You have to know, apparently, the energy grid is weakened. It's like the same way our ozone layer is weakened. There's some holes in it. There's some holes in the energy grid from all the PCBs <laughs> that we're using on Earth. Some of the humans who have raised their consciousness to a level, they can partly like vibrate outside the limited frequency band of the third dimension. They, they've kind of damaged the grid. So there's like humans who are damaging the grid with their mind powers. And the grid looks now like Swiss cheese. That's a literal quote from the research that I did. The grid is Swiss cheese. And so is the cheese on my Subway sandwich. You are bread. <laughs> yeah. You are bread. There's cheese. Let's get to the meat of it, you know? <laughs> let's get, yeah, let's get to the meat of it. When dead, you need to just ignore whoever, whoever approaches you. This is stranger danger, and you need to know that the grid is weakened. So focus. You need to start focusing before you die. Learn to focus really hard and recognize, you know, your consciousness. Like that's what you need to do. So you concentrate when you do die, focus and concentrate on what is above you. Allegedly, you will see a grid. You will literally see the Swiss grid. Once you've spotted the grid, you need to look for the holes in it and choose one of the holes, focus on it and put out the thought and intention that you are now going to nano travel. And as soon as you do that, you go through the hole and you become a greater entity in the spiritual universe. Mm. Those are the steps. Okay. Look up. They're putting out these big Hollywood's putting out these movies saying that don't look up. You remember that one? Yeah. Look up, look up. Glad I know this now. Now there is an alternative method. If that's, you don't want to look up. <laughs> the alternative method is don't listen or pay any attention to any beings, ignore and avoid them. Any being that comes to you, after death is one of them. Trust no one. There's going to be an overwhelming frequency of love projected towards you. The sense of love will either be projected from a tunnel of light or from one of the beings in order to attract and get you into the tunnel of light. You have to refuse and block these frequencies just by intending and refusing to feel or receive love. So, you know, just continue your life as you have. Yeah, continue your life as you have. <laughs> Isolated and lonely. Yeah. <laughs> Rejecting the love of others around you. Ignore everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's your shield. <laughs> so the tunnel of light will show up. All you have to do is refuse to enter. Remember the free will. Sometimes these beings will create or manifest like a fake hell or heaven and they'll try to trick you to get in the tunnel of light like we talked about. Just remember that's all fake. So after death, all you have to do is intend, create, or think of your own realm or dimension or universe and intend to go into it. Remember, you can just create your own thing. So just create your own thing and you can just go there. And then now you have your own universe and your own dimension and you've escaped the matrix. Here we are. Should we go into final thoughts? Yeah, let's do it. You're stuck. What are you going to do? Remain stuck. Okay, you're just going to take it. Okay. No, like remain... Okay, never mind. <laughs> Not remain stuck. I thought, like, you're stuck in, like, this whole being enticed to the light, whatever. And they just, like, remain stuck. You ignore it. Uh, Overall, crazy theory. A lot of the same things were, like, repeated over and over again. Yeah, I don't... I, I wouldn't say I'm a... I'm a prison planet supporter, but I do like some of like the ideas there. At that point of death, you create whatever you want. You're in control. You don't necessarily need to go to the light. And the other thing is like in regular life, you're taught to like maybe not trust 
anyone, do your own thing, then in death it's the same thing. What's the safe word kind of thing? Yeah. No, I mean, I have I have so many qualms with this uh, theory. I think it was, you know, it, it's fun. It's like one of those theories. It's, it's a fun theory. I, 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 I do want to reiterate, for me, the biggest hole in the theory, what is called evidence, is it's much too weak. We've done these topics before, like near-death experiences. I'm fully on board. Yeah. Like, I think near-death experiences are a real phenomenon. I don't know if yeah. we can explain them. I know they seem to overlap in an uncanny matter with psychedelic experiences. And we've talked about this on the podcast before. So there's some interesting overlaps, you know, between like a DMT trip and uh, a near-death experience, which is quite very intriguing. And there are people trying to study these yeah. things, but they're very difficult, right? Because it's, it's a lot of anecdotal self-reporting. So it's like, it's hard to, it's, it's just hard to do those types of studies. So I'm not against things like that. Even when we did like the out of body stuff and we were talking about, we did astral projection and stuff. We did find a lot of like scientific papers talking about different brain regions and stuff that can induce stuff like that. So, you know, I, I think some of the ideas are interesting, but I, I don't think that they're great evidence. If you're like, oh, this person did an astral projection and they spoke to a reptile it's just not enough. You know what I'm saying? Like it's too anecdotal. It's, it's yeah. not good. And the past life regression stuff. I remember when we were talking about that topic, we did get into the reincarnation stuff. That was pretty cool. Like, uh, Ian Stevenson and like the, the kids remembering past lives. There's some really weird stories, but again, like this is kind of going to like the false memory. Like memories are like fucked. Like you can implant fake memories like these, it's just not solid for me. All of those things, all of these methods, it's none of it's solid for me or reproducible or repeatable. Yeah. And a lot of the people that are purporting these methods, they, they're not coming from like an unbiased perspective. They are 100% biased. Like they, they truly believe that they are entering some kind of realm like the past life regression type stuff or like the astral projection, they believe what's going on in their head is that, you know what I'm saying? And it seems like that's biased. It's like, cause you, you don't actually know. And I don't know how you devise a study to do it. Yeah. But that's like one of my biggest qualms. No, I think that's, that's true for a lot of people. Just going to some specific things quick here. Like we kind of brought this up already, but like citing random names as like a source just because they've written a lot of books or they've talked a lot about it, it's kind of like, that's pretty weak. Like just because David Icke spoke it, it is, you know, and that goes for all of those people like Val Valerian, Simon Parks, Wes Penray. It's kind of just like an appeal to authority argument. And it's like, that's just like a religion. That's the same as any religion. It's, it's really no different. I have some issues with the memory being stored in a soul. So like, how can you explain injuries to the hippocampus then? If memory is stored in the soul, like why is there a specific region in the brain that when it's damaged, like memory stops working properly? That's a good point. So like the whole memory wipe theory, it's like, it's going to be hard to disentangle that from the brain. Not saying that it's not possible to theorize that, but I have some issues there. Soul numbers, this is also a huge issue for me. Where, because the population is increasing, right? So, where are these new non recycled souls coming from? Right? Because, like, you're recycling a certain amount of, like, there's more births than there are deaths every day. Yeah. So, if you have 50,000 deaths or whatever the number is, I'm not sure what the number is, but you have 100,000 births, where is that 50,000 coming from? Right? The soul number doesn't make sense to me. Like, where? Where is that coming from? Unless it's coming from like different planets and Earth just becomes this prison for other souls from different universes. Yeah, totally. It just seems like a cop out to me. Yeah. It's not really solid. And it's like, I have an issue with the negative energy stuff because like they're like, oh, negative emotions and feelings. They're actually like feeding on that. And I'm like, well, actually, you know, negative emotions and feelings, like although they aren't pleasant to experience, they're actually good for us right like pain is good people who are born with like they don't have the receptors to like feel pain in their nervous system they like die at a very young age because they just can't 
experience the physical reality around them, right? Like they burn, they like break their arms and shit. You know what I mean? Like, mm. cause they can't sense reality. So it's like pain is actually not bad. It keeps you alive. Yeah. Right. Same with like feelings of like rage and anxiety and stuff. Like, yes, it's unpleasant in the moment, but those are actually all like highly evolutionary selected emotional patterns that will keep you alive and help you push through like shitty situations. So to me, it's like you're saying it's negative, but you're only it's only negative because it feels unpleasant, but it's actually going to keep you alive. So how is it negative? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. No, it, makes it doesn't sense. really make sense to me. It just doesn't. The whole thing doesn't really add up. I will end my final thoughts. I think it's clear we both. This is a big. Uh, I guess no for both of us. Yeah. Cool theory. Fun theory. I think it's fun. I like. I love fun theories. I love fringe theories. This one, I just I'm not on board with. But I will end with saying I do have a cool fun fact. There's this dope band called Clutch. And they have a song called Escape from the Prison Planet. And that's cool. They sung, they made a song about it. Oh, I also, I have, I have a, one last thing here in addition to that. This was a post that I found on r slash escaping prison planet. The title of it was Cats Protect You and Your Household. And they go on to say cats are advanced beings. They are masters of astral projection and they protect humans. Cats have extremely strong energy fields. And they will force negative spirits, demons, and shadow people out of the house or building. The ancient Egyptians knew this. They worshipped cats. And then the top comment on that was, dogs protect their owner in the physical density and cats protect in the astral. And I thought that was fun. Yeah. Anyways, shall we uh, roll out of this one? Izzo. Yeah, let's do it. Before we move on, we would like to give massive props and credits to our producer tier on Patreon. Thank you to Spurgalicious Asshat, David Cheesum, Big Balls Small Wiener, Batcat Meatloaf, Velcro Shoe Guy, Tosh Collins, Andrew Johnson, Honest Elliot, Nikki Hansen, and Justin Ware for enabling today's episode and the continued growth of the show. All right, so before we roll out of the episode, be sure to go right now and sign up as a free member on Patreon so that you can vote on what topic we record at one of our next recording sessions. Signing up takes one minute and it's completely free to do. So just go to patreon.com slash the swerve podcast, press the blue join for free button, create an account by entering your email and password, and boom, you have instant access to voting, which Magnum will explain more about. So we're releasing a poll of five to 10 topics from our master bank of recommendations on the first of each month. And then voting is going to be open until the 15th of each month. So if you hurry up and sign up, you can cast your vote before voting closes or before you miss out on the next round of what we're going to be dropping. We also have three other paid tiers on Patreon if you would like to support the podcast. We have a $1 Ride the Wave tier where we drop one extra Patreon-exclusive episode each month. It's an episode like you've heard here. And we have a bank of over 40 episodes now. You will also get a shout out on the podcast. We have a $3 slap that asked here where you will get early access on Sundays instead of our typical drop time of Wednesdays to all of our main topic episodes. But you will also get a Patreon exclusive holographic sticker pack mailed to you. And then finally, we have our $10 producer tier where you will be credited at the end of all main episodes that we do as well as receive one monthly special bonus Patreon exclusive episode. Right now we're doing our connect the dots series where Izzo and I input a bunch, all the topics we've ever done, Patreon exclusive and main into a random number generator and have it output the topics. And then at random, we try connect the dots of 12 topics that are output in any way we possibly can and they're absolutely hilarious so i will mention those make sure you sign up for topic voting so you can help kind of direct what topics we're going to research and record next and i would like to thank everybody for listening slap that ass and ride the wave
at the end, you know, like it's this is what they think is going on, and they think this is their first life. But here we go. This is like their thousands, li- their their thousand, thousand. <laughs> All right. <laughs>